My name's Natalie Di Rosario. I'm a multidisciplinary artist, so but I predominantly work with charcoal to create um, portraits. I was born here in Wajak Nunga Buja, um, and I have a cultural heritage of being Anglo-Burmese. I started making art um, at a very young age. Um, I was probably just as I could walk. I was um, <laughs> drawing and um, using using art kind of as a creative outlet. Um, I was relatively shy and still kind of am most of my life. So using that creative expression is a way for me to be able to articulate my ideas. Um, so I guess like, you know, it was always my favorite subject at school. Um, and when I graduated, I went on to continue studying art. Um, and basically, it's just always been a really p large part of my life. I feel like my, my proudest accomplishment so far has been just being able to sustain an arts practice uh, for the past four years. Um, it's, yeah, it, there's so many challenges kind of involved, but I think, you know, kind of starting to get recognition uh, for the work that I do is quite great. I guess... I guess my, my favourite tip is um, that you need to learn the rules so then you can learn how to break them. And that's something I follow throughout my whole practice. I guess um, charcoal is one of those mediums that um, is quite misunderstood. I think a lot of people use hard charcoal as a drawing tool. Um, so the way I like to work is crushing the charcoal into a powder um, and using soft brushes to work with. Um, I guess that takes a lot of patience, um, kind of learning the technical side. Um, but I guess it's kind of just about experimenting and having fun as well. Firstly, with the sector, um, I think it is quite difficult for many artists to sustain a practice um, within this society that we live in at the moment. Um, so, you know, if we think about the early Renaissance days, artists were actually funded um, and had patrons that would basically support their whole career, um, as well as offering, you know, a place to live and were really well paid. Um, whereas we fast track to now, um, where there isn't really any kind of rules or laws around, you know, being an independent artist and not paying them or um, actually trying to maintain some kind of stability and normality in life as well. Um, so that's quite difficult, I'd say, across the sector. Um, I think for me personally, um, I do face quite a lot of um, being stigmatised. I think being put in a box as a person of colour, um, although I come from a very diverse background. Um, and that's something that I work with within my art itself, but as well as within the industry. Uh, yes, yeah, so I guess um, went through my like, kind of formative years as a teenager and early 20s, I was really trying to explore who I was as a person. Um, so a lot of that was to do with my mental health and kind of the the trauma or, you know, feeling displaced in your own country, um, things like that. Um, I think as I've gotten older, my work's kind of less becoming less and less about me, although it is still portraiture, but it's also adding to this conversation about where are we from, um, you know, as a, as a society and, you know, kind of where are we going as well. I think um, there's a lot of kind of questions and work to be done about people that are from different cultures. You know, I think if you don't have a First Nations heritage or background, then you do have a history of migration to Australia. And I feel like that's not really normalised. And I really would like my work to kind of head in that direction. I feel like at the moment with my work, um, you know, I started learning really technical, you know, skills, how to, how to you know, uh, the shading and lighting and all of that. And then the next step for me was kind of um, what am I trying to say in my work? Which emotions am I trying to bring out? And then now I think for me the next step as well is kind of working on specific projects um, that are more like well thought through um, and really well planned. Um, so something I'm really interested at the moment 
is using charcoal um, and, well, ex exploring charcoal in its um, not only physical sense but um, the, the kind of metaphor or, I guess, like ideas behind it um, and one of which that it is basically dirt. So it's basically from the ground. Um, it's something that has decayed from a tree or, you know, from land. Um, so I've got this idea of um, creating portraits in my same style using charcoal, but like foraging the charcoal myself um, in different land. And then once it's done, um, kind of burn the works and destroy them and then have them kind of full circle back to how it was originally found. Um, so the kind of the thoughtful process from start to finish is something I want to explore. Within the book, um, it probably there's, so there's multiple portraits of people, um, particularly women uh, that are expressing uh, quite like, you know, aggressive emotion or sad emotion. Uh, there's one in particular, um, Lillian, who, so it was a subject who I met while I was living in Thailand. Um, and she was from New York and was telling me all about her, um, kind of her life story and some of the stuff that her herself and her son had been through. Um, and so I kind of wanted to document that um, and took a series of photos of her while she was kind of screaming and crying. Um, and it was a very, I think, vulnerable moment for her that she shared. Um, and I guess I really wanted to portray that um, within the work, not just her emotion, but, um, you know, this sadness and, and anger that a lot of women uh, go through. Um, so there are quite a few really great artworks uh, in this book. Um, one particular that's a standout for me is some of the work by Barry Emerald. Um, so I really particularly like the um, work that he's done painting um, the ground um, and there are some really excellent aerial shots um, of of his kind of stylized work. Um, I particularly like that the space in which he's painted has um, been a really strong inclusion in the work. Um, so he's gone for kind of abandoned spaces or spaces that are often neglected within society. Um, and I think that's a really important uh, way, an interesting way to kind of like cha change the space, change the narrative that we have of those kind of spaces. There, there are multiple kind of influences to my work. Um, I think visually I, I really resemble with a lot of uh, like surrealist artists. Um, so I think it's kind of playing with that idea that um, there's more than meets the eye. And I think that's something that a lot of surrealist artists, particularly for uh, photographers such as Man Ray do really well. Um, in terms of the cultural identity, um, I come from an Anglo-Burmese background, so that basically um, is is a mixture of about six or seven different cultures um, and the fact that I've come to Australia, um, just it's just kind of coincidence almost um, that I've been born here. Um, so I, I guess I look for inspiration for other second and third generation artists who are doing the same. Um, Abdul Abdul Rahman, I think is probably my favorite um, artist that's working within that space um, and is someone that I look up to. Oh, um, no, thank you guys for, yeah, for putting this all together. I know it's um, no easy feat to get a publication uh, together. So, yeah, thank you. And I think it's going to be a really awesome reflection for a lot of the artists looking through it in five or ten years' time and being like how far they've actually changed or how their practice has developed. So, thanks. <laughs>